Well hello and welcome to my latest video. It is damn cold outside. I've just been out for a ride and it was freezing. So I'm here in the studio. Uh, yes, and I'm wearing wearing a jacket because I'm a little bit chilly. And I'm doing something slightly different today. It's not a rant. No, it's not a rant. Uh, it's not an unboxing or an unpackaging because I'm not wearing the hat. What I'm doing, what I thought I'd do is a book review. And the book I'm going to review is this. It's called End to End and it's by Paul Jones. Now, if you have watched my most recent video when I did an unboxing of some Chinese stuff, you will know that I have signed up to do Le Jong, Land's End to John O'Groats. Yeah, it's, it's an iconic journey from the length and breadth, or rather from the furthest southwest corner of Britain to the furthest northeast corner of Britain. Britain, which happens to be in Scotland, which is John O'Groats, and it's about 875 miles. Now, coincidentally, uh, shortly before signing up, I had ordered this book from Amazon. Yes, I'm sorry I ordered it from Amazon, um, because I felt like reading it. And what I want to tell you is that this book is not only the best book on cycling that I have ever read. It is actually one of the best books I have ever read, period. And that is high praise indeed, and you'll want to know why I really think it's worthy of that. Well, first of all, what is it? Well, the end-to-end, -end, as it's known, the Land's End to John O'Groats, uh, is obviously a route that you can do over a period of time. And because you can do it over a period of time, you can also do it quickly. And if you can do it quickly, then you can get the record for doing it in the fastest amount of time. So obviously, over the years, starting in the late 19th century, people have done the route and they have tried to do it faster and faster and faster. And what Paul Jones does in this book is to talk about the various people who have taken the record and to interview quite a large number of the people who are still alive who held the record at various points. And so he interviews, uh, just let me check my notes here, uh, Eileen Sheridan, Janet Tebbett, Pauline Strong, Andy Wilkinson, Michael Broadwith, Mick Coop, Gethin Butler, and quite a few others as well. And he interweaves their stories, their reminiscences, the, the trials and tribulations that they faced when in getting the record uh, with his own story, uh, part of which is him doing not the whole route in one go, but various different bits of the route at different times. And Paul Jones is a wonderful, wonderful writer. Now, one of the advantages I suppose he's got, and this is going to sound a little bit weird, but one of the more advantages he's got is he's had some, some issues. He's had some problems. He's had some mental health problems. He's had some work problems. And he uses those and weaves them, interweaves them into the story of the end-to-end -end cycle route. And he really does bear his soul to the reader. Now, I have been very lucky over the years, and I never, never forget how lucky I've been. I haven't suffered from mental health problems. I don't suffer from anxiety. I don't suffer from depression. Um, I had a few sticky moments in my job where I started to worry rather uh, excessively about things that were going on, but it never really tipped over into the kind of nervous breakdown that some people uh, can face. But Paul Jones has obviously had his issues with work, he's had his issues in his life, and he confronts them and talks about them in a brutally honest way. But he talks about them and he writes about them in a lyrical, poetic style that, I have to be honest, at certain points almost brought me to tears. And some of his sentences and some of his descriptions are simply glorious. Now, He's written a couple of books before, uh, both of which I happen to have read. One of which is called I Like Alf and 14 Lessons from the Life of Alf Engers. Now, Alf Engers was a kind of iconic British time trialist, but he wasn't 
I would have thought universally known. And I'm, I wouldn't have thought he's much known outside of cycling and outside of cycling in the United Kingdom. So to write what is in effect a biography of this man is a real achievement. And it's a fascinating book. And the other book that Paul Jones wrote is this one, A Corinthian Endeavour, which is the story of the National Hill Climb Championships. A, uh, not exclusively, but a, a very esoteric kind of British cycling tradition where you uh, cycle up a hill or a climb and you try and do it quicker or faster than everybody else. So this is his third book. And it is his best yet. And I want to, I want to read out a few sentences that really, really struck me. So let me start with, start with this one. And here he's talking about Bristol. And I'll need to take my glasses off because otherwise I can't see properly. And he says, and I quote, there is less industry now. The city centre full of shiny sculptural fountains that don't work and street food and shouty stags and hens from Wales and people down from London dragging sacks of equity behind them and praying that they have sourdough toast in the regions. Now, doesn't that sentence sing to you? Doesn't it fly? Ernest Hemingway in his uh, younger days, one of his ambitions, he said, was to write one perfect sentence and that's what he sought to do and that to me that sentence that i've just read out it is a perfect sentence it encapsulates bristol it encapsulates a number of ideas a number of principles a number of thoughts and locks it into uh, 40 or 30 or 40 or words or whatever it is and sums it up absolutely beautifully and here's a Here's another section, and here he's talking about the, the forest of Boland, which he cycles through. And he says, the forest of Boland is beautiful. I ride through it, and it opens up on every side. It is waiting to be written, but I have no writerly intention to capture the beauty of the landscape, because it seems forced. I remember a talk I went to when someone said, I am attuned with nature when riding because I am a creative. And I experienced a visceral loathing at the idea and the functional shift of a noun. I don't want to observe it with a writer's pretentious eye. I just want to observe it and leave it there. I don't want to look in order to compare, to force metaphors and bend the landscape to fit the sentence and end up with personified flowers dancing in the breeze menacing clouds, air being vital, all those words. And isn't that, isn't that a wonderful lyrical description of the forest of Boland and the endless trouble that us creatives is, oh, whoever, whoever thought that one could actually describe oneself as a creative. And here's another one, bear with, bear with bear with. He's talking here about uh, some of the demons that beset him and he has trouble sleeping and he gets a, a night terror as he describes it. And here he says, when I don't get night terrors I get demented dreams filtered through a hose of paroxetine designed to halt the night terrors, recurring motifs. I get normal dreams as well, the night before, I dreamt about Alf Engers at a dinner table. He was asking questions, putting the world to rights, castigating. Lots of cycling writers were there. One of them said he liked the cover, but hadn't read the book. Everyone said I was being too domestic, not continental enough. Too niche. Because I didn't write stories people wanted to read. Big biographies which say nothing about anything but sell by the shitload. I woke up sweating. Now, is Alf Inger's book, I don't know how many sold of this, few hundred perhaps, it's not going to sell in the thousands, but if you like cycling and you like fine writing, then you're going to like Paul Jones. And if you're interested at all in the end-to-end, -end, and as I am, because I'm planning to do it, then 
that is something to follow. Now here, he's arrived at John of, Gro John of Groats and he said, it is cold and now really wet and John of Groats is a terrifying place. It has all the romance of the end of the known world amplified by a Scottish summer. The sea of the Pentland Firth is a violent swirling cauldron. The ocean roaring through the gap between the mainland and Stroma, a once inhabited island in the tidal stream. Orkney lies beyond. It is the grimmest place in the world. It exists in unrefined, unwelcoming beauty, and I feel a profound sense of anticlimax, standing at the sign in the heaving rain and wind, taking a record of the moment the ride finished and real life began again. I think back to Land's End, to Harmon and Blackwell, and their words ring true in my ears. The 20 miles to John O'Groats requires no description. There was nothing to be seen but bleak mourn ditch. I cannot help expressing my disappointment at the celebrated terminus and surprise that so many tourists should ever go so far. I can't... I can't emphasise enough how fine the writing is in this book. He's driving back now in a camper van. His mother drives the camper van and picks him up. And he says, I look out the window at Dornock Firth. Up ahead, a cattle lorry is creeping along the road. Every time it goes uphill, a river of liquid sewage pours out of the back and covers the front of the camper van. The windscreen wipers succeed only in smearing it back and forth, the screen wash diluting it into an opaque, hot chocolatey smudge of cow shit. Doesn't that, doesn't that sing to you? Doesn't it tell you everything you need to know about traveling in a camper van behind a lorry full of, full of cow shit? And then, he, throughout the book, he talks about going for job interviews and breaking down in tears and not getting the job. And then finally, he goes to an interview and he says about this one, because it, it's, it's, about, it's about teaching and they have to do a, a kind of presentation. And he says, everyone is full and frank about their current experiences, unencumbered by baggage and younger so much younger, with taut skin and a sheen of innocence. Everyone seems to have chosen Greta Thunberg for their non-fiction teaching task, and I feel adrift. I like Greta Thunberg, but I never would have thought to choose her. Instead, I have chosen an extract from Harmon and Blackwell. I manage not to cry at the interview, but it is close. My bottom lip quivers, but I bite hard and hold it in. Instead, I cry down the phone when they tell me I've got the job. My wife finds me crying and doesn't know if I've got the job or haven't got the job. I am a different kind of John Woodburn and it's hard to know. I tell her and she holds me so close and I never want to let go of her. Of this moment when things feel better and repaired and full of love. I feel a forgotten feeling of pure, untempered happiness. I wonder how the other candidates reacted. What?! You gave it to the silent older bloke who made the gnomic comment about driving in the rain and taught a lesson about bikes. And I laugh at the madness of it all. In the end, I suppose, and Paul Jones makes this point far better than I do, the end-to-end -end is not about the end-to-end. -end. It's not about cycling 875 miles. It's not about trying to do it faster or raising more money for charity than anybody else. It's about your own, your own private Idaho, your own private end-to-end -end journey. As he says, I did it. I pretty much imploded on the way. It created some breathing space of sorts. It muted everything else. The layers of meaning probably undermined me in the end. I was doing it to make sense of other people doing it to know what people meant when they said Berrydale. That's one of the iconic climbs. This in turn meant that I didn't ever really access the kind of feeling that comes from just doing it. I made it unnecessarily complicated with huge long stages and strange gaps. 
But I've come to realise, slowly, belatedly, that this book is the journey and some other profound changes have been happening at the same time. Like the baddies in Raiders of the Lost Ark, I've been looking in the wrong place. This book is the end to end, not my painfully slow ride spread out across time like a stain on a tablecloth. I rode to gain experience so that I could write with clarity and truth about the journeys people take, the reasons why, the thoughts they have, and the changes that happen to them. I'm not going to read any more. I bought this book from Amazon, and I think it was 16.99, which is full price. Beg, borrow, don't steal. Buy this book if you want to read not only the finest book about cycling ever written, but one of the finest books I have ever read, then please read End to End by Paul Jones and enjoy every last word of it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.